day eight of the Miami Open was full of blockbuster matches, and for the most part, they didn't disappoint. In the first women's match, we saw a battle of major champions and world number ones, Ash Barty and Victoria Azarenka. This match was definitely a roller coaster, which Barty was the victor of, beating the Belarusian 6 1 1 6 6 2. I have to give credit to Barty, even though she played a solid match all around, she went away a bit in the second set, which she's prone to do sometimes. The defending champion Barty has been playing well ever since her first raw match against Kuhova, where she trailed 2 5 in the third and saved a match point. Since then, she's been very solid, taking out another major champ, Yelena Ostapenko before ultimately Azarenka. The road won't get easier as she next faces Ariana Sabalenka in the quarters, the Belarusian crushing Marketa von Joseva today, 6-1-6-2. Moving down in the top half, we witnessed an incredible battle between Alina Svitolina and Petra Kvitova, the former coming out on top to reach the last eight, winning 2-6-7-5-7-5. Much like with Barty Azarenka, this match saw quite a few momentum shifts, especially in the final set, where Kvitova struggling with heat quickly went down love 3. She flipped the switch a bit though, winning the next 4 games to go up 4-3. Svitolina then took advantage of a lapse in the Czech woman's play and looked to serve it out at 5-4 but couldn't. Eventually though, in the 12th game of the decider, she sealed the deal with an ace. Kvitova really should have won this match, she's been playing really well all tournament, she demolished Cornet and Kanta and she nearly did the same thing against Fidelina, but unfortunately she had to deal with the elements and she just wasn't acclimated to the heat. But giving full credit to Elena, she fought very well and was the ultimately deserved victor. Up next for Svitolina is Anastasia Sevastova, who ended on a conjure sweet comeback story, winning 6-1-7-5. At the bottom half, Naomi Osaka leads the charge and is into her first quarterfinal in Miami with a convincing 6-3-6-3 win over Elise Mertens. Osaka definitely played a lot better than she did against Tomjanovic and was able to recover from some minor lapses in both sets, more noticeably the latter, where Mertens went up 3-2. There, the Belgian took a medical timeout for her shoulder, which actually proved to be the turning point of the match, as Naomi from that point forward barely dropped points. With the win, Osaka hosts the ninth longest winning streak since the 2000s at 23 matches. And more good news for Naomi, if she wins two more matches, she can reclaim the number one spot, that is, if Ash doesn't reach the final. Naomi will have to get through a tough match first against Greek woman Maria Sakari, who outlasted Jessica Pagula 6-4-2-6-7-5. Sakari saved 6 match points to take out the American. Now moving on to my match of the day, Bianca Andreescu pulled off the upset despite being the high ranked player. Taking out Garbine Muguruza 3-6-6-3-6-2, Garbine holding an 8 match win streak was playing very well for the first set and a half, dictating pretty much all of the points. Bianca at one point figured that she should step up to the plate and be more aggressive, and really started striking her forehand. She looked extremely hobbled, coming off the nearly 3 hour match against Anisimova, but still had enough willpower to come up with shots like this. I really think that Bianca is back, she played like how she did in 2019, and really took the racket out of Muguruza's hands. In the quarters, Bianca faces another Spaniard, Sarah Cerebus Tormo, who is into her first Miami quarters, after taking out Anster Burr 6-4 Love 6-6-1. Six, six, this is her 12th victory out of her last 13 matches. Cerebus Tormo win in Guadalajara, reaching the Monterey semis, and now this run in Miami. Regardless of what happens next, she'll be making her top 50 debut on Monday. Looking at the men's matches, there weren't as many compelling encounters, all but one being ended in straights. The only slim winner in the draw, Marin Cilic, has seemed to get his mojo back, taking out young Italian Lorenzo Musetti for his first third consecutive win at an event since the 2019 US Open. Next, he plays Andre Rublev, who for the third time this month beat Martin Fuksovic 2-1. Canadian Milos Raonic got a solid win over Ugo Humbert, winning 7-5-6-4, and now faces Uber Hercox, who beat another Canadian, Denis Shapovalov, 3-6. And, and probably the most surprising result of the day, Sebastian Korda halted Aslan Karatsev's momentum, crushing the Russian 3-in-love to reach his first Masters 1000 round of 16. He next meets Fitzy Diego Schwartzman. 
Second C Stefano Tsitsipas had a solid performance, overcoming a tricky K Nishikori 633661. He now plays Lorenzo Sanego. Top seed Dino Medvedev will be back in action tomorrow against American Francis Tiafo. The Russian has had little trouble with the 23 year old in their past meetings, but this time might be different as Daniil was struggling immensely in his match against Alexei Popperin. Francis on the other hand has some confidence behind him after pulling out a comeback win over Dusan Lajevic. Now aside from these matches, there were a few interesting revelations in the post-match press conferences. When asked by Ben Rothenberg of their willingness to take the vaccine, players gave some mixed responses. Alina Svitolina said that her friends talked her out of wanting to get a vaccine in the near future. She's also unconvinced by what the benefits might be. Russian Andrei Rublev said that he'd opt not to take the vaccine for no particular reason, just feelings. Arna Sabalenka said that she doesn't really trust the vaccine and doesn't want her family to take it. Diego Schwartzman's response was poorly translated as he later came out on Twitter and said that he would take the vaccine and meant that he wouldn't get it before his family and people who truly needed it. The top two women's players Osaka and Bardi are also optimistic about the vaccine, Naomi saying that she's planning on getting one whenever available. Ash said that her family will do what they can to get the vaccine. I'm not going to give too much commentary about this because from previous history, I know that this is a very touchy issue, so yeah. That's all for this video and let me know what you think about all the results and feel free to leave some predictions in the comment section below. Also make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you're notified when I post more updates and even some match predictions. Additionally, I know that I was gone for a while and I simply just needed time off, it wasn't because of Serena's loss or anything. I just had a lot of stuff going on. I have a lot of responsibilities, but now I'm back and ready to put in a lot of work and I'm happy to be back and making videos again. So thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time here on Grand Slam Tennis News today.